Welcome back to our page. We're doing an end grain cutting board today of Space Invaders. It's uh, 12 by 17. So the first thing we have to do is uh, plane up some lumber. And what we will we'll be doing is cutting one inch blocks. So once we have our edge done, then we're going to move it over to the bandsaw. And here we are. So I'm just cutting it just a little bit over one inch thick. It's about one and a sixteenth. Uh, so we'll, we'll be cutting that all the way through. And then once we cut that, we'll take it over to the planer and plane it down to one inch thick. And there it is there, the back piece. And we have some waster that we'll use for another project. Uh, what I also do is mark on the pieces once we plane them and you, you get it to the desired width of, well, man, this is one inch. What we'll do is mark the top side because whenever we cut them into the squares, we want to know what is the size of the side that was already done. So I'm just running all the boards here through. And what I've also done too, if you look, I've milled up more lumber than I need for the board but I want different colors of grain in the wood. So this will be the light, and, um, and I've looked for open grain and closed grain. So when you look at the top of the board, you'll see different types of grain in it. And then once we cut those, we'll just mix them all up in a box and put them throughout the board. There's a board coming here. Uh, you can see where the, um, the growth rings in it are quite definite and uh, that will show up nice on the board. So like I said, we have some tight and some loose grain. So here we are cutting the other side. I, I use a yellow marker crayon. You probably can't see the yellow on it, but you'll see the, uh, the top of it is marked. So when we go back and go through the planer again, we know that that is a surface that's already planed. So we'll uh, turn around the back. There's a bunch of boards going through. I'll be putting some more boards through. There we are. You see me on the other end and I'm looking for the marks on the top of the board and uh, so that we know that, that was the surface that was plain. We want to go 90 degrees from that mark. And here's all the pieces. Like I said, I ended up with probably enough here to do two boards, but I really wanted to mix up the grains so that when you seen the board, it was uh, had all different patterns in it. There's some of our darker pieces coming through, and it's the same process. So what we're after is uh, is a uh, pretty close to one inch by one inch. It doesn't matter if they're a little bit over, or a little bit under, as long as they're all all the same size. And we were gang cutting them. So we put about five or six of them together and then slide them on the sled. I'd like to use a hold down board on top. And uh, what that does just stops them from getting caught on the blade when you're pulling back and snapping up on you. So what I do is put a bunch of the uh, boards together and just run some painter's tape over one end. And that just sort of holds them together as we move them along the sled. You see the box here on the other side, so we're just putting them all in there. There they are laid out on a sled glue board, and I built this, and I'll be putting up a video on it, how it's built, but it's a, um, a glue sled, it's called, and uh, the cams that I use are, uh, you have an offset in the, in the cam pin, so it's offset by a quarter of an inch, and I drill the holes uh, two inches apart, and then you, you can just put a wedge in between. So there's my pattern. And if you see, um, I start at the bottom and work it across. And you want to put your, your dark and your light uh, material uh, according to the pattern. So they're marked from uh, top to bottom and from side to side. You can see I already have one glued up on the other side. And now what I'm doing is I just tilt it up. And that's what's nice about these glue sleds. And I can tilt it up, make sure that my grains are running opposite from each other, then they stand out. And I'm trying to put tight grain and, and uh, looser grain, wide grain aside from each other. 
it just makes it easy to sort it now. And then once it's all laid up the way I want it, uh, we'll glue them all together. So if you notice the size, they're uh, six inches. And our board will be two and three quarters of an inch thick. So what we'll do is, well, I figure this is the easiest way of doing it, and you're not working with um, small channels or trying to put them together. So we're doing the entire runs, we'll glue them all together. And then uh, once we sand and plane them to size, we'll cut these in half. So you're only doing half of, of board. And, and then once we cut them in half, then you'll have a right and a left. And you can work, put them all together to make one board. So you're basically only cutting the left hand side, let's say, uh, that's why I've got it measured on our pattern there. And then uh, once we get them all glued up and they have a chance to set for a day, we'll uh, sand them down and plane them and uh, get them the size. And slicing them this way because it doesn't really matter if you over sand them a, a little bit or under sand them uh, because you're going full run from top to bottom. And you see how nice and easy that goes in. And we have a wedge, you know, to take up the gap. And these cam locks work really, really good. Just give it a tap down so they're nice and flat. And I put some tuck tape on the boards too so if the glue uh, sticks to it. So once I roll the can, because it's offset, it just makes it nice and tight. You can see in the board behind there, I also put a weight on top too, just put a sacrificial board on top of it. That's a 10 pound uh, weight. And I just lay that on top. I have a lot of these in the shop. I uh, pick them up in garage sales. They are great for weighting down and uh, gluing products. So if you're at a garage sale, pick up some of these mini barbells. Here we go, just tap them all down, make sure the height is right. And it's all cam locked, and I'll probably check the end again. Clean up the top surface, just makes it easier to sand. One thing about this, you can see readily, and then I always check the grain in case I want to move it. The same thing. Just weight them down and wait overnight. And you can see I have a whole bunch in the background there. And there's my pattern that's checked against. And I believe this is the last one of the series, and then I'll have it have all the panels done. And then I'll, I'll take them and uh, clean them up and we'll, we'll sand them after, the, after they're all done. And then we can start uh, putting the puzzle together. But I, I found that this, it's not just quick and easy, but it's also very accurate. And it's nice to be able to uh, see all the grain in the run that you're gonna have. Uh, so it's good to have said I picked out three boards of the lighter material and that's a fur picked up three boards with three definite grain changes and uh, so it's it's a nice varied color you just slide in your end one there it doesn't need glue on it it gets glue from the other side just tap them down tight put in your wedge and just twist the cam lock very nice process. So I have made two of these tables and I made about six cams and you see the cam has a one inch dowel that comes through it and I've done that so that I can turn it right or left uh, depending on which way uh, I want to. Uh, I was just checking there for uh, uh, flatness on top and uh, And the reason I've done that too, so if I do bigger boards or wider boards, I can actually slide another cam. I can just pop the pin of the center of one. They're not glued in or anything. They're just pushed through those dowels in the center of the cams. And you can uh, just take a pin out of another one and double them up. So you have an a inch and a half cam. These are made out of three quarter inch plywood. Like I said, when you draw your circle, just offset your cam by a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch. 
There's my pattern just checking again. And that is the last one. Then you can see it coming together there. You can see the pattern. Here we are cleaning up. If you want to save your belts and not have any rough marks, take a paint scraper and just clean off the glue. It just makes life so much easier. Everything stays nice and clean. When the glue, these new glues, whenever they get into sandpaper, they leave hot spots. Uh, some people call them corns. But yeah, so uh, take the time to scrape, scrape off the glue. We're fortunate enough to have a drum sander. So now I'll be running these th through the drum sander. And I only, uh, we only sand these down to 120 grit. You don't need them any finer than that. Actually 120 is good because you, you want a surface for the glue to bond to it. And these drum sanders will really, really give you a nice flat surface. I thought about running them through the planer, but I think this is a better choice. It's uh, And then we edge sand them because you're going to want a flat surface uh, going up against your saw whenever you're cutting them. And what I did at the end there, I've got a square block. You can see at the, at the end of this table. So we use our square block just to make sure that they're square and the one end is sanded. You don't need both sides, just, just one side will work. And uh, this is a great tool to do that. Nice and accurate and quick. Probably one of the worst things to do is edge sand material. It's just, uh, you know, especially if you're working on end grain, you can't really plane it right. And uh, just showing you there's a square block on this tool. What I've also added to is you can see a red thing coming up. I took a dowel and just put a slice in it and epoxied it onto the end of the metal there. And that's the dust chute. Because if you if your hand or a piece of material catches this belt, it can suck you up against that metal. So that's a good safety thing. Here we are just cutting it on the bigger bandsaw. So we're just cutting these at uh, two and seven eighths now. And so we're cutting all our our pieces at uh, two and seven eighths, and uh, th this will uh, will give us all our pieces. Like I was saying, what you're going to end up with is uh, with a right column and a left column. So and this actually worked out really good. This is the first time I've ever done like this. I've made uh, multiple boards before, but. Uh, They seem, seem to work good. And at this point, there you go, there's a right and a left, and you can see all the different grain in it. So there's a piece I just book matched to show you the grain. And then when I put it on, uh, uh, if I'm able to flip them over uh, to change the, uh, the grain from top to bottom, I'll do that. But if they have uh, a pattern in them, you can't. So we're just laying out and trying to figure out which goes where. A bit of a puzzle. Uh, it doesn't take too long though. So if you have uh, grandkids around, bring them in and get them to build the puzzle for you. They're all lots of fun. This board is actually for my daughter. She's a bit of a gamer, Kelsey, and she wanted, wanted one of these boards. Actually, I built my son the first one, and I think she wanted it because the son got one and the daughter didn't. But uh, here we go, it's all coming together. You can see the critter there. There it is. And I do a double check. I just go from left to right and count to the center. And you can see your board, make sure they're all the same. I guess you can just tell that by looking at the picture if you're familiar with Space Invaders or not. But there it is there, it gives you a better picture. You can see how all the grains match up really quite nice. And, uh, you know, the, the, uh, doing it this way, they all work out perfectly. So because I didn't want to lose my pattern, if I moved it, I, I just took the crayon and drew lines, a couple of V-line v marks. If you're a woodworker, you're familiar with that. And what I'll do is just draw, draw a straight one for the top of the board too. 
so I know when, uh, which of those top and left. I didn't really need those lines because uh, all I do is just move the board aside and glue them and transfer it over. But you know, if you have a smaller shop and you're moving stuff around, this is uh, once you get it put together, it's a good thing to have. You know, it uh, it just gives you a nice accurate. Uh, there it is there, not glued yet. I'm about to get glued. It's just a picture showing you the whole thing. Here's our gluing table. I like laying it on parchment, so if it glues down the parchment, the parchment is easy to get off. Or wax paper. Not newspaper. Newspaper is a lot harder to get off and it'll stain your product. Parchment's pretty cheap now, so and there we are. Like I said, I um, just took one side at a time and, uh, and I wasn't moving them around too much, but, but you can see my marks right out of the glue there. Never seen to pour enough glue into the bottles. So here we are, all clamped up. Uh, we'll wait it overnight. And we'll just take that all apart and give that a scrape. And uh, then it'll be ready for the sanding and finishing of it. And uh, as I was doing this, uh, uh, while I was waiting for the glue, I, I was actually cutting all the pieces for another board putting them together. That's when you have the setup you it's just as easy to do two or three as it is one. And there it is there. You see how every, all the lines lined up. And that's a hard thing when you do a uh, digital box like this with so many pieces. I believe uh, I didn't do a count but I believe there's about uh, 220. So I gave that a scrape all off, got all the hard bits off and uh, now we're just running that through the drum sander again. And uh, like I said, these drum sanders do a great job. But if you don't have a drum sander, just you. I would start with a uh, probably 60 or 80 grit on a belt sander. And just take your time and uh, do the top and then go from that to a um, orbital sander. But uh, there it is coming through. So what I do is I slow down the machine on the final sand. and. So like I said, the, the uh, sandpaper grit that I have on the drum sander is uh, 120, the final grit. And uh, so what we do is we uh, start here again with 120 and that just gets any of the, uh, if there's any marks for it out and then I will move up. So we sanded it to uh, 220, so I'm just changing the, the sandpaper. So we'll bring that up to 220. And that should give it. Yeah. You can go to 182. Um, I just wanted to. And it's nice that the patterns on both sides of the board it goes all the way through. Uh, you know, if you had a little laser engraver, you could put up in the corner uh, one side for meat and one side for vegetables. Uh, I make a lot of cutting boards for people in Ohio. And, uh, and what I'll do is put a coin on one side. There it is, just sand it. There's no finish on it. That's uh, sand it to 220, all blown off. And here we go, just putting on mineral oil. I only use straight mineral oil. Uh, you know, everybody wants these big fancy finishes and stuff, but uh, mineral oil is a good, safe product. You, you can take it um, uh, internally if you. Uh, it's used for uh, a laxative. It's uh, used on your hands. It's a good, safe product, and uh, I just work that in and uh, use a piece of paper towel and saturate it. And I really like to uh, uh, kind of warm up the wood with the paper, and what that will do is allow the oil to seep in. And you know, you've got to put a lot of filling this. Uh, these boards got four coats of oil, and then I'll show you what I did on the uh, set. Uh, two more coats after we just oiled it. But if you can imagine how much oil you have to put on an edge green, uh, what you have is basically a bunch of straws and you're trying to fill them, uh, all the straws that go from top to bottom. And uh, some, because the, the wood has all been dried out and they're all hollow. So you have to fill all these cells. And that's why it usually takes so much finish. But I've learned from a English butcher 
what they used to do on the butcher blocks and they actually use mineral oil too on the butcher blocks but I um, mix up a compound of uh, wax wax and oil so here's the second day you can see it's a little different I'm just wiping off the excess and the, the dark wood has really taken on a nice hue looks nice so once you take off the excess there and uh, what I'll be doing is putting all my wax and oil in combination. There's some mineral oil there. It's just normal mineral oil. Not real expensive, so which is good. Helps out in the budget shop. Uh, and you can get it on the Wally World or Dollar Store. So here we are about to put on the, the final coats. And uh, what I have is a wax and oil coat. So I use the mineral oil and I put about 10% of paraffin wax in it. So I, uh, I, I heat it up in the stove. Uh, there's the paraffin wax. I heat it up in the, in the stove, the oil, and then add about 10% paraffin wax. So whatever your volume is, add a couple of sticks. The wax is quite inexpensive too. And you, you want to uh, warm that. You, you don't want to boil it. You just want to warm it enough to melt the, the wax. And once the wax gets melted in into the oil and just uh, let it cool and pop it in a jar and I use this on all kinds of projects I even use this on our tools because it's just an oil and wax mixture and it will buff out nice and it goes in the grain and what the wax does uh, which I've learned from this English butcher is uh, that uh, the wax is acting almost like a, a seal for a beehive uh, the wax is going down into the uh, end grain uh, like I said if you can imagine a handful of straws and the wax will go down and fill these and allow the oil and the wax to lay in the top surface instead of continuously being sucked into the block of wood and it just gives it a beautiful finish and sheen and it's and it's safe and it's a, the safest product on the market and it's not going to break the banker either and um, it can be used for uh, everything uh, if you make spoons or bowls or and like I said I, I wipe down all the tops of my cast iron machinery with it I just find, I like to use my hands uh, uh, what it does is it warms the uh, wax as you're uh, putting it in and it's good for your hands too it's kind of a nice feeling just to rub the board but you can see how it just sort of disappears. It goes through, you get all the sides and it just goes right into the board. There's that uh, just being plied on it. And I'll give that a wipe off. And there's the mineral oil again. And then uh, you just mix some mineral oil and paraffin wax, 10%. Heat it up until it goes clear. And then uh, give it a good stir and uh, put it in a jar and keep it on your shelf you use it for everything and I've got you know, right on it mineral oil and wax hope you enjoyed the video and uh, stay tuned for more and if you like it subscribe looking forward to your comments too thank you